My name is Habib Bakande. I'm an author, sex educator and public speaker. I've uh, published six books on race, sex and history. And my latest book is called Kunyaza, The Secret to Female Pleasure, which is basically a book about the Asian practice of Kunyaza, which is, um, to put it, it's a practice to help women squirt or, or orgasm during heterosexual encounters. Um, it's a tradition that's been practiced for hundreds of years in East and Central Africa, in Rwanda, Uganda and Kenya, in parts of East and Central Africa where men are encouraged from a relatively young age to pleasure their wives and also women are encouraged to, um, they're entitled to pleasure so it tells them about their body, they've got um, elders in their communities known as sengas, which are female sex educators and they teach women from a relatively young age prior to getting married and during marriage how they're supposed to enjoy themselves in a bedroom. And what fascinated me about the Kunyaza practice is that it's a tradition which is female-centred and female-orientated, whereas much of what we hear about sex and sex education in the West is generally from the male's perspective and all about all about the man enjoying himself in the bedroom and the woman and pleasuring the man, whereas in the Kunyaza practice, it's all about the man pleasuring the woman and the woman enjoying herself in the, bed, in the bedroom, whether that's by way of an orgasm, um, female ejaculation or squirting or what have you, but it's a female pleasure, like I said, positive practice, which... I kind of wanted to raise awareness that we in Africa we have got some traditions which celebrate female sexuality and also teaches teaches sex in a sex positive way. I've also do um, some workshops, some workshops for men only, some workshops for couples, and some workshops for women, where I teach the practice. Now, many people ask, okay, you've got this practice which has got a reputation of helping women squirt. How does it work? Now, the actual technique itself it involves a man using his erect penis to stimulate the clitoris and the labia minora. And so what we'll do in the workshop is kind of show people, because many people aren't even aware of what the clitoris looks like or about the labia minora and the labia majora. So it's about educating people in terms of how the man will stimulate with his erect penis, the clitoris and labia minora. But before you do the kunyaza technique, which is a tapping technique, where you can do it zigzag or horizontally in order to entice or increase um, arousal, the woman has to be mentally prepared for kunyaza. Because some people, when they come to my workshops, they think, okay, if I do this tapping technique, all of a sudden she's going to gush and squirt and slightly. It doesn't work like that. Before you engage in any form of sexual um, practice, whether it's kunyaza or even penetrative intercourse, the woman needs to be mentally aroused and um, emotionally ready for sex. And that's something which a lot of men aren't aware of. And they're not really... Um, I think there's a lot, a lot of lack of education in terms of um, understanding the difference between sex and sexual pleasure. A lot of people have sex, but not many people have pleasurable sex. Mm. And for men, generally, how I'm speaking, we look at sex and sexual pleasure the same or sex and orgasm the same. Because nine times out of ten, if a man is going to have penetrative sex, he more than likely is going to orgasm. Whereas for women, that's not the case, and many women are aware of that. So there's a disconnect, and that's why with the kunyata practice, one of the benefits for men is that it teaches them to be patient in the bedroom. It could also help them last longer in the bedroom because they're not thinking about penetrative sex all the time. As men, we've got this ego. And I think why a lot of people are interested or intrigued by squirting is a form of sexual applause because men think, okay, if I can make my lady squirt, then I've kind of, quote unquote, done a good job. Um, whereas, for example, with orgasms, because we know that a lot of women orga um, fake orgasms in the bedroom, this is something that a lot of men are worried about because they don't know how, quote unquote, good they are in the bedroom. So with squirting, it's like, for them, it's like a proof that they've kind of done well in the bedroom. Um, how do you think not how do you think, why do you think the culture has changed um, in regards to this kunyaza technique? Um, the reason why I ask that is because this kunyaza technique is hundreds of years old, you said. Mm -hmm. But in the current like African climate, parents don't talk about sex. Parents don't teach their children about sex and how to enjoy sex, African parents. So obviously I don't think you have the exact answer, but how do you think, not how do you think, why do you think the culture has changed so much that it's gone from you said parents and aunties teaching girls how to, well not girls, boys and girls, how to enjoy sex and how, what, like, what to do to the current climate that we're in. That you're not even allowed to talk about sex. Parents don't talk about sex, they don't teach their children about sex. So, I, mean, I wouldn't say how, but why do you think it's changed? I think for, again obviously when we're speaking about Africa, there's obviously over 50 countries in Africa, so I'm not speaking like one culture, mm. but generally across the continent, many African countries have adopted a, I would say, a Eurocentric or Victorian Christian understanding about sex. Mm -hmm. So when the Europeans colonised much of the African, Af African continent in the 19th century, 
we adopted their understanding and their views about sex. So mm -hmm. sex being it's just for procreation, which from is from like Christianity, Christianity. Christianity. Yeah. And that wasn't something that was from our Asian culture. Sex was something that was supposed to be a pleasurable act to be enjoyed by both the man and the woman. Whereas when we was colonized, we adopted like I said this Christian or this Catholic. So it's religion. Well, I'm coming to that because I wouldn't just purely. I'll say it's it's an interpretation of a religion mm. because not every religion has a. Um, so some religions have a sex positive or pleasure mm. positive stance. So, for example, in Hindus, when you, if I were to say the Kama Sutra, many people are aware of the Kama Sutra. When they think of the Kama Sutra, they think of sex positions, not knowing that it's a religious textbook which is teaching about love, intimacy, and sex. Only twenty five percent of the book actually speaks about sex positions. But when it was translated in the 19th century by a British um, explorer, they just focused on the sex positions because the British at the time were very prudish. And now when you think about the Kama Sutra, everyone just thinks about the sex positions mm -hmm. when that's not what it's about. So that's an example of a religion have a very, a very sex positive or pleasure positive stance towards sex. Whereas many Hindus now, they see sex as quite taboo. Similarly, many, many Africans now, sex is very taboo despite in their cultures or the Asian cultures were very pleasure positive and sex positive, so much so that even in Rwanda, where Kunyasa originally is from, sex is still a taboo. They don't really talk about it openly. Mm -hmm. So if you want to kind of hear about the practice or learn about it, you have to go to rural, rural villages. And um, BBC also did a documentary recently about the Kunyasa practice, and they went to Rwanda, and they had a very difficult time finding people to speak about it openly. So if you were to ask what is Kunyasa, a lot of people would be like, we don't want to speak about this on camera, or we don't want to speak about this to foreigners and things like that. Mm -hmm. So even in places where it originated from, people are uncomfortable to speak about so it. So there's a variety of factors. Yeah, but I think a lot of it is because we've adopted a... a so like a, a Western, westernized... Yes, I understand that. Yeah. Sex. Even when we talk about sex, look at some of the words we use. Dirty, nasty. Mm. It's all kind of derogatory or like demeaning things, whereas in some other cultures which speak about sex in a positive aspect, they don't use these type of words when they're speaking about sex or our private parts. So I would say for many of us um, in Africa diaspora, we've adopted like a, um, a Victorian Christian understanding about sex that it's just for procreation or it's just for the man's benefit. And that's something that I think we do need to change by um, going back to our, some of our Asian cultures and embracing them. Um, mutual pleasure because again sex I believe is both for the man and the woman so okay. but that's what changing one? now isn't it it's changing I don't yeah know. that's what I'm saying with the wet ass pussy with Cardi B and so on I feel like yeah, women are a bit more open saying that of what they want and you know I don't think guys can just be going around just not going around pleasing a woman because I think women would should just leave and just find someone else and I think women are knowing their place and mm. they're not gonna you know, tolerate that no more. That's what I think, yeah. but maybe I could be seeing it wrong. Yeah. I hope it's changing. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's changing. Well, it's not changing as much as I probably, I think it should be. Mm. And the reason why I say that is because after Cardi B released her track, um, Where I Was Pussy, there was a lot of backlash. I don't know if you saw online from men, yeah. like Red Pill guys, even some yeah. guys in the hip hop community. And there was a double standard that they were complaining about Cardi B speaking about sexual empowerment and wanted to be mm. um, pleasured by her husband or a partner but they will say oh you know this is a bad example for kids but they didn't say the same when many when it's men saying the same thing, same thing. Yeah. So there, is, there is this double so standard. i don't i think it's changing gradually but i don't really think it's changing there's been a lot like you said there's been a lot of backlash with her song a lot of people are saying bad things about her but what is she really saying that's that bad but because it's a woman saying it yeah no but i'm saying women like it's so bad but i'm saying women mm -hmm. are okay with it which is women. different because no, i think because before even, women before mm. i think it was a bit a bit scared or to talk about and open about sex and about yeah. what they want but i think now women are just like no i want to be pleasured like this if you if you don't have this or treat me like this then bye mm. i agree with that i think that's yeah that i definitely agree with that there's more women that feel i think i'm feel that they're entitled to yeah. pleasure whereas previously it was like Sex is for the man. Yeah. yeah. So we've like Cardi B's song Kia before a few, yeah. um, about ten years ago. They are feel entitled to pleasure. Yeah. They're demanding pleasure, which is good. So even I remember um, Nicki Minaj. I think about five years ago, she said that I demand to be pleasured in the bedroom. Mm. And then Huffington Post and Cosmopolitan they led with an art um, a headline saying she's high maintenance. Mm. Yeah, and that's crazy. So, it's yeah. like, as a man, so why is it high maintenance? Because right. she has to be pleasured. Yeah, because, yeah. yeah, a man's not gonna like that though, because that means we need to put in more work, and we don't want to yeah. put in work. So that's why you know women are gonna get the 
the clapbacks. I was going to say, so how do you think things can change? But you're saying things are changing. I but think they are. But I don't know. I feel like they're changing, but really gradually. I don't think you can see a woman and you don't pleasure her and she's going to stay no, with you. you. T- you're not a woman. <laughs> a lot of, I, a a lot lot of, of men don't lot, feel like yeah. they need to. As long as they're enjoying themselves. That's lo- yeah, it. a lot of women. Are Wait, and women are still staying. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because they no, I feel like women will go and get elsewhere. No, not always. A lot of women, like, I've received number of messages like every week i'm not exaggerating from women of different ages from as young as 20 to as old as 70 that are not satisfied in the bedroom it's like an epidemic female sexual dissatisfaction is an epidemic across cultures religions what have you it's not um and again a, a lot of women and i'll put it like this and this is something a message i've received recently so you've got a woman who's been married for about seven years mm. she's only orgasmed once in a marriage right oh. she's been faking orgasm faking pleasure for a number of years now she feels entitled and she wants to be pleasured, but she doesn't know how she to tell her husband. Because he's accepted it for so right, long. And he's going to react negatively because he's yeah, yeah, thinking, yeah, yeah. where did you hear this from? Who are yeah. you speaking you to? Didn't say anything before. Yeah. So whilst yeah. I do agree with what you said, Jack, that mm. more women do feel entitled to pleasure and the more women are learning about they their bodies. They feel entitled, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're actually getting what they're entitled exactly. to. Exactly. Because if we're speaking about, obviously, within the context of heterosexual relationships, Men need to participate. Men need to be willingly, mm. actively trying to mm. satisfy their partner. Yeah. But like when I even when I do workshops, eighty percent is always women. Mm. Even when I'm open up to both men and women, so women mm. are interested. And even if I'm writing or speaking directly to men, women are interested. But men are like they don't want to show that they're interested, but they might message me on the site kind of thing, mm. or they rather go to porn. Mm. So do you understand? Because we've got this ego, we don't want to go to someone to come yeah, and about. Yeah, like, how do you have sex? Yeah. And it's this idea that I've had sex for X amount of years and you're trying to tell me that I don't know how to play. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I feel like with a lot of men, they don't like to be corrected. It's like, it's, it's embarrassing yeah. to be told you need to do this to please them. In their mind, they think they're pleasing the woman, but they've never actually sat down and asked, yeah. like, are you satisfied? That's that is good enough. Because of our ego. Yeah. Our well, sometimes ego. you girls lie as well. Well, that's true. You girls lie for our okay, ego. Well, so we I think feel like, like if you're with someone for a number of years, you should know your partner yeah, well enough not, to know if they're really enjoying yeah, themselves or not. When I was like just out here, yeah. just wild, like you're with so many different partners, you don't even get that well, opportunity. Well, I'm not in a relationship. Yeah, you but should if you're not know in a relationship. Well enough. I don't know, when you're not in a relationship, it's a bit different. Yeah, like, I'm saying, in a relationship, so before that, I, I, yeah. I realised I didn't really know how no, to have sex until recently. Yeah. yeah, it's only like, kind of now, like, oh, this is how, mm. these are the parts you need to hit mm. and everything. Before yeah. that, yeah. and maybe that's that another be, problem with our generation, because you have so many different sexual partners, you yeah. don't have the chance to actually learn if you're exactly. good or not. And we don't we don't have open and honest conversations. Yeah. Exactly. I know it's men, so it's like, like you said, same as well, in my younger days, whilst I was wild and reckless, I'm just yeah. doing my thing. Mm. Yeah. And in my mind, the number, as long as I'm- The number's high, so that means yeah. actually it's, it's all about quantity. Right. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm talking about quantity as opposed to quality. Yeah. And as a man, especially when you're speaking amongst your male friends, they want to know, it's like, as long as you've had sex, mm-hmm. as long as you've had sex, obviously an attractive woman, and it's, if you had sex with a number of attractive women, then you know what you're doing in the bedroom. Yeah. But mm. how, and you can measure that. You can measure how quote unquote good you are by the numbers, but you mm. can't measure how good or how satisfied your partner is because she will need to say it. You're not yeah. going to record. And no man really right. mm. asks. So that's the thing. So that's why I think it's important that we have open and honest discussions with our partners. And again, some people can find it very difficult because mm. if you've been in a relationship for a number of years and you haven't had that discussion, now the woman feels entitled. Like, back to African culture. Yeah. Like, even people that are born here, do you think, like, even as a man, whether you're white or black, but even if it's even more of a taboo to, like, ask the woman, did she enjoy it? Do you, like, do you feel like people born here are mm-hmm. quite uptight when it comes to... I would say people in the UK, definitely. Yeah. So... Was that talking about sex? Yeah. Even well, before... in Africa, do you think they'll talk about it? No, but... No, I... I well, the funny thing is, I think um, Africans in America are more open to mm. have this conversation yeah. than in the UK. So I think it's, it's, it's double. Because obviously in the British, in the UK country, we're quite prudish anyway, because mm. we don't want to have this conversation. And because of our African or modern, modern yeah. African culture. Whereas in America, I've noticed that they're a bit more open to kind of have this Yeah, conversation. Americans are much right. more open. Right. So that American men talk about eating out the women and stuff like that. I feel like, yeah, people are doing it. It's, 
a small minority of men that will actually come out and start talking about it. It's, it's happening, but mm. it's not something. I feel like if men had more conversations between themselves, they would know how to please yeah, the that, women. That'd be very better. Difficult. Yeah, I remember when I was. Um, because I, I started like eating pussy when I was like, I feel like it was kind of late. I started around with my 20s, my 1920s. Wow. So I started kind of late, but I remember it was that era, it was like an abomination yeah. mm. to go down on a woman. You know, like with all the Bashman and all the mm. songs coming out, yeah. <laughs> like Batman for you, all them, <laughs> all them songs, yeah. yeah. It was so, I remember when I'd done it, I had to just own it. Right. I had to own it straight away and be like, yeah, this is what's because I didn't want... Because at that time, people were doing it, but they were denying it. Yes. But I, I wasn't too sure. I actually believed that they didn't do it. But girls <laughs> would be like, no, he does it. But I'm thinking, why would he lie about this? Yeah. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to own it. And yeah, people were mad. What, guys or girls? My boys, guys were mad. Like, yeah, yeah when I catch you, Jax, is on, like... Yeah. Can you imagine? Because I wanted to go down to the girl. That's but it's changed so much now. Yeah. It's, I don't know. I, I don't know what period it changed. I think. I think maybe that Little Wayne ever when Little Wayne was just talking about it recklessly. That noise. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And, and then after that's when it started getting being more now it's just accepted. Yeah, it's crazy because I remember when I I I watched a couple of videos that made and I saw the way the woman was reacting from oral sex. That's what I wanted to engage in it. So mm. I'm, and I'm never really concerned too much about what other guys think, but I was teased a lot about it. Like, mm-hmm. Even people who said, oh, that's why you got pink lips, pink lips, because yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. Now at the time, it didn't bother me, but I knew that um, a lot of people's reservations from it came from like their cultural backgrounds. Like, it's a number of my West Indian friends. I know mm-hmm. we've seen that Jamaicans don't do it and I think from a Christian perspective, oral sex was seen as part of sodomy. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. So, in Bible, yeah. yeah. so in the Bible, you know, sodomy is, is, is prohibited. It was translated, it was understood to include the oral sex as well as anal sex. Oh. So that's why some people, they consider oral sex as abomination. Wow. But then it says, it says how you, because how it was translated, so in mm-hmm. old English, sodomy includes anal sex and oral, oral sex. sex. Okay. So, so I can understand from, obviously from a religious perspective why they had reservations. But if you know it's something that women like and enjoy, as a man, for me it was like, why wouldn't you do it? Okay, let's speak. on the flip side, I feel like in school, like giving head was like the worst thing, you're like a hoe and stuff, but it became more acceptable much earlier. Like, I would say, okay, no, but me and Jackson are the same age. Actually, I probably around the same time. Yeah, I think all sex probably became acceptable. Was it, was it acceptable? Because it's always been I'd acceptable for women to do it. I'd say 20s. No, I don't think it was always acceptable. I think in school days, it was... Acceptable for... Another abomination. It was dirty, like you're... Yeah, the girl gave her. The girl gave her. Yeah. Cause, okay, because when I was... Because I'm, I'm in my mid-30s, so when I was growing up, it was seen as certain girls from a certain demographic would do it, mm. but black women wouldn't. Yeah. But that was a lie. Yeah. yeah, I know. I don't that. Yeah. 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 yeah, it was seen as black girls only no. give head when they were in a committed relationship. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, that was but a there's lie. other girls from other ethnicities that would do yeah, it. Yeah, they'll freely. say like yeah. the mixed race girls with white girls right, in exactly. my school. That's right. what. Yeah, and, and yeah. so that's so it wasn't um, seen as taboo for girls from other ethnicities to do but it. But for black girls. Yeah, and then, yeah. But I would say it's still taboo for some men to do it because even when you hear a number of men, even recently, talk about it. Yeah. They will make it like I would only do it to someone. That uh, most men say they would only do it to someone in a relationship, relationship with. Which I still don't understand. Yeah. So, so in my mind, you're willing to have a child with someone. Yeah. Right? Or for like a one night stand, what have you, but you're not willing to yeah. pleasure that same woman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To me, and that maybe, makes because, sense. maybe because it's a, it's a, it's a form of, it's seen as a form of submission. If I'm doing yeah, this, I think it's because it's yeah. seen as a form of, it's not about the act, it's, it's the fact that going down a woman is like, you're her dog kind of thing. Yeah. That makes sense. I think it's a perception. It's thing. not it's what it. it is, but that's how some men. Yeah, they see it as like this see is the end of bowing all. down yeah. to the woman. Yeah. So if it's not their girlfriend, then why would I do that? But yeah. then again, for me, I'm just I always wonder like, do you not like. Are you having sex? Exactly. For, for your you. friends. Or for and, yourself. Or, or for your like. Yeah. Or, yeah. For your ego, do you like doing yeah. it? Yeah. Oh. yeah. And, and yeah. I think a lot of men have sex to please themselves or to please their male friends. Yeah. They're not really interested. This is what I find so strange. This is why I'm always like, if you're doing it for your friends, then maybe you're not straight. 
Maybe you're not. I'll, no, I think they're straight. <laughs> I have my reservations so. sometimes because when people, <laughs> if you're always thinking about what people think, you're with a woman, so why are you worried about what a man thinks? Do you know what I mean? No, I hear this. I just think a lot of men seek validation and approval from other men more. That, that's more important to I them. I find that so very that strange. Just I've always wondered if there's. It's just way weird. It's just. It's just how. It's, as men we're gender, we're, we're very different to women. Yeah. So again. It's like, for example, as a man, if, you, if you're if you in a long-term relationship or you're in a relationship with a woman you really love, care for, and respect, you don't put her out to to, your, to the world. Generally, mm-hmm. you're trying to hide her. Whereas, I'm generalising her, whereas, whereas with women, it's the opposite. Mm-hmm. And the reason why men do that is because we're quite pre- protective. We yeah. that if we put, like, if we showcase our love and for, for our partner, there'll be other male predators and vultures yeah. and scavengers that's going to, which we know that's the case. Okay, Even so is that the friends, reason... I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying that the, the, the rules differ from man to woman. So yeah. when a woman's looking and understanding, okay, if you really love me and stuff like that, why don't you post me up on Instagram and this? Mm. I'm doing it to protect what we've got because I know not. I'm not worried about you. Mm-hmm. I know how other men, men are, even some of my male friends. Yeah. So that's why, and that's why, like, if a man is committed and loves a woman, he won't, he, she won't be in these WhatsApp groups. Mm-hmm. She won't be spoken about with these male friends. His male friends will know little about her. Mm. Whereas if it's like a jump off a woman that, like the local mm. bike, a woman mm. that you just seen casually, that's the woman that he would speak freely about. Mm-hmm. And some women they would un- would understandably thinking, if he's always speaking about or showing this woman, this is the type of woman that he likes. But yeah. in reality, it's yeah. the opposite. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah and about um, I would say the double standards between men and women when it comes to. Um, being open about sex, like for years, men can, you know, just talk to their boys, like I just had sex with this girl today or whatever, but a girl would have to be on a low, as I say, a hoe on a low, and then just be like, you know, I've never done nothing or whatever. But like I'm saying, I feel like it's changing now. I feel like girls are just being open saying, yeah, I've done this, I've done that, I've got this from him or whatever, and yeah, so I just think like. So you don't think there's still double standards? Yeah. It, in the sense of way, but I think girls are not caring about the double standards. Do men care? But there are still double standards though, because if a man sees a woman saying, "Oh yeah, but I looked at this guy today," they would look at her like, "Oh." But in the but in the day, what you have to understand is that that's how the guy would look at them. Fair enough. But it's up to you. If a guy is also doing that, it's 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 up to you on how you look at him. He can't. I'm talking about society though. No, but how like, do you look at this? How society because look at a man that talks about his sex life freely? Yeah, but opposite, like versus how they look at a woman. But girls will like that. That's yeah. What is what 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 Jack is saying? And that's like, the whole double standards debate. I hear it, but it's like does he accept? If you're if women, I'm generalizing that. If women are accepting men who have slept around, mm-hmm. speaking openly about sex, and this. And, um, that's on them. Well, I'm just saying, if they're accepting them, okay, mm. that's fine. If more women are speaking openly about sex, but men aren't accepting them, mm. but they are. No, but they're not accepting them in terms of like to marry them yeah. or long term yeah. relationship. Yeah. That double standard will always exist. Yeah, so I do agree. With, I do agree with both of you what you're saying that, but I don't think the double standards is going to change because it never, never. men aren't willing to change. Women are changeable. Men aren't changing. Mm. So men are still even like for example when. Um, Kanye West a few years after he married Kim Kardashian, the lady mm. was saying, like trying to, I don't want you to dress the way you were dressing before. Yeah, you're trying change. to release her body yeah. and kind of mm, control mm, her sexuality. Mm, mm, you see that a lot with mm. men. Yeah. So men aren't changing. So as much as, yes, some men are marrying strippers or mm, mm, bad bees or whatever from yeah, Instagram, yeah. after a while, they stay. Yeah, they still want that. Yes, housewife, homebody. Housewife. Right. Yeah. So, so men aren't changing. So, so I, mm, I, I don't think true. the double standards are going to change anytime mm. soon. But my question to both of you, do you think the double standards? Do you think it's a problem to have double standards? No, and that's, I don't that's think like you know, life is not fair, saying, and yeah. people need to understand that life is not fair. Like, just because I can do something doesn't mean you can do it. There's, I'll give about the laws of the universe. Yeah, there's like laws, like one plus one equals two, whatever. People try to to make things fair. They try to make one plus three equal two, but it's never going to happen. It's never, uh, you can try to change the way society moves and everything, but I feel like there's been a, from the beginning of time, there's just been certain rules set. And then if you try to manipulate it, there was, you can try to change the majority of the, you know, the mindset a bit to be accepting to it, 
but I don't think it would fully be that standard, if that makes sense. I know you're itch that isn't at all, please. Which, which, which um, I kind of agree, but then I don't, because there's things that are happening today that hundreds of years ago, someone will say this can never happen. Like what? Like, okay, let's just give Cardi B. I'm not going to keep, keep using her, mm. but what she's singing about on TV, there's a video, the way she's dancing. A hundred years ago, do you think they ever visualised... Oh, this is what I'm saying. It's excessive in society, happening. but it's not a standard. That's why you're saying it's, it's not, not a standard. standard. Because it's not a standard that you'd like to with children. It's not. That's why she's getting complaints. She can't be called a role model. But that's, yeah. why, exactly, that's why she's getting complaints because it's not a standard. Uh, so, yeah, so I kind of do agree. In, there's some things that will not. Like a woman being. Okay, like, say a woman cooking and cleaning. I don't think, even in 100 years' time. It will change. It's going to change. Mm. It deviates a little bit. Like, okay, so now women expect men to cook as well, mm. but the primary role of a woman still is. To nurture her. I don't think that'll ever change yeah. because women are the nurturers. They're the ones that have the children. But why? Why? That's are, nature. Yeah. That's not. Yeah. It's not created by mankind. That's how mm. it's supposed to be. But why are men so uncomfortable with women speaking about sex openly? Why do you think? I don't know. It's I don't, that's like a. It's a massive topic. But I think it's because. Okay, you're looking at a woman as a mother. Mm. As someone that looks after the family, and then she's talking about sex. But it you know, that's a, I, I, even that, I'm sorry, I just find that's problematic as well. That a mother is still a sexual woman. I know, a mother still, a mother still enjoys sex. Yeah. And there's, it doesn't mean because and she's there's a mother. some men, and I do get this question quite a lot. Is that there's some men that they lose desire in their yeah. life once they, they have a child. Once they have yeah. a child, and the problem is because it's up to see them as a mother, as this figure that mm-hmm. is no more essential being, that, and it's yeah. like I don't want you to use your mouth to kiss my child what you to yeah. pleasure me and it's like why are you making that as if a mother can't a be couple of mothers, sexual yeah. whereas you yeah. could be a multifaceted person you could be a father you could be you could an be, employer yeah. or you could be an employee mm-hmm. you could also be a sexual deviant if you wanted to be mm-hmm. you could be pleasure someone in the bedroom but the woman she can only be a mother or yeah. someone that's yeah she can't, she can't that's a problem i think like sexually liberated she yeah. can't do the things she was doing before she had a child yeah. I know that's actually like a good. I don't know. Yeah, that's. And I think a lot of it. it is I, I think a lot of it is, is, is how men we view women. Yeah. Like is we put them in boxes mm-hmm. kind of thing, and even the concept of being sexually liberated. My issue with the is I think it's been hijacked now. So like a woman can be sexually liberated and be celibate. Mm-hmm. She can be sexually liberated. Yeah, it doesn't mean she's sleeping with every. She can be sexually family. liberated yeah. and having multiple partners. Yeah. But Unfortunately, when a woman speaks openly about it sex, it means that she's sleeping around. Yeah, or, yeah. and people will, will equate that to being sexually liberated, meaning she's promiscuous, mm-hmm. but it doesn't necessarily mean that. Yeah. And there could be a woman who is sexually liberated, but she's waiting for a committed relationship. Yeah. But because how we view sexual liberation is that, oh, she must be promiscuous. So yeah. a lot of it, I think we do need to challenge yeah. our understanding about female sexuality mm-hmm. and like, not for women in boxes kind of thing. Yeah. So what do you feel about WAP, whereas pussy? Her. No, but um, <laughs> on the younger generation, yeah. um, for me personally, I don't think it's that serious because when people do say these things, I'm thinking, what are you expecting the kids to grow up and do anyways? They're going to grow up and be sexual beings regardless. This is what humans are kind of put on the earth to do anyways, to have sex and reproduce. So it's like they're saying that if you don't they don't see this kind of content then for some reason they're not gonna have sex or i don't know what i i think the, some people's reservation with the song is that like there's some lyrics that were kind of like saying it along the lines of in order to get a tuition fee i slept with someone or something like that. oh okay okay so what it's you're like saying. using sex in exchange oh, for okay services. okay okay and i okay. think that's what people have the problem with yeah it's yeah like, Okay, if you're openly speaking about sex and like what Lisa was saying, these are like considered to be role models, then mm, a lot mm. of young children will aspire to And then to be I like, think it desensitizes children towards sex. I yeah. feel like even using your virginity, yeah, it's something you should do when you're ready, when you understand what sex is. Yeah. When you talk about sex so freely, it makes them think, oh, just another day, like just go and have sex. Yeah. And it shouldn't be like that. It should still be like a special, like something special to a child. They haven't started having sex yet. It shouldn't just be like, oh, I'm just going to go lose my virginity. So I feel like when you, when children listen to such sexualized songs, it desensitizes them to what sex actually is. Mm. Like, and they want to try it out. Like they they want to try it. But so what? Okay. The cuties feel, I don't know if anyone saw that. Never seen that yet. I haven't seen it, I don't intend to see it, but 
the gist of it is that you've got a young um, Senegalese woman, I think, living in France, mm. um, who she's trapped between two cultures, a, a, like African Muslim culture mm. and a like westernized, sexually liberated culture. And from a relatively young age, I think between eight and eleven, she starts to dress provocatively and mm. follows mm. all of these artists. Mm. And it's very, to me, it looks quite ch- like p- pornographic. I mean, mm. um, pedophilia, sorry. Yeah. Mm. But it's like this idea that when I'm exposed to what it is to be liberated mm. as a woman, being sexually liberated, people em- emulate that, which is like children. Yeah. So I think that's dangerous. And I think yeah. That's why mm. I think like they're seeing, they're seeing all this dress that they're half naked. They think, okay, yeah, this is normal. It's yeah. not normal. Yeah. It's not bad, but for a child, it's not normal. They're, mm. they're, they don't have mm. the, like, the awareness of what being half naked causes. Mm. Like, do you think nowadays people are afraid to pass judgment? You know, a yeah. lot of people because say, everyone's so politically correct. Yeah. No one wants to say anything, yeah. and they have mm. people like, coming after them. Yeah. But for children, like no, you're seeing right. what Cardi B's seeing, I think, oh yeah, this is normal. I'm going to go and do it. Mm. And this is where paedophiles yeah. come into it. it, it seeing is, small mm. girls dressed half naked. They think, oh yeah, I look like Cardi B, but they don't know they're attracting yeah. paedophiles' yeah. attention and stuff like that. To them, it's innocent because they're children; they don't understand. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I do agree, and I think that's why when we look at like Asian African cultures, young children were speaking about sex, or they were, were taught about sex, mm. like it was taught by a number of elders, yeah. and it was taught in a safe space yeah. where it was either women only or men only, and you've got an elder that's instructing, and they understand like and what they understand, sex is, and they understand. Uh, they're being taught about sexual ethics. Mm-hmm. I think that's something that we don't really hear about. Yeah. We hear about the act, we hear about sexual pleasure, but we don't hear about how to conduct sexual, yourself. How to conduct yeah. yourself. And again, knowing what's right for you, and I think that's mm-hmm. probably missing in like Western cultures, you know, depiction about sex. We don't really hear about yeah. sexual ethics and we don't really hear about sexual consent. Yeah. Well, kind of thing. So yeah, that's I think yeah. we definitely need. Um, like I think the Asian African model is definitely better than the Western one because you've got experienced older people that's. Game. But then don't you that's missing in the current yeah. African like normal normal African household now, they'll just say she don't have sex. Because that's we've, it. We've, we've adopted the Westernized. West yeah. We've adopted like we leave it to the schools, the mm. parents aren't gonna mm-hmm. get involved, uh, the uncles aren't gonna get involved. You go and learn about sex in school, and mm. then when you get to a certain age, maybe 24, 25, where's your wife, where's your husband? Yeah. Mm. yeah. You're saying about you don't know what sex is, so. Mm. And it's, uh, it's back okay, to that with your experience, as well. Do you know what sex is now? Yeah, as an adult, of course I do, but it took years of. So, what way is it for you? I feel like it's a special connection between someone you have. It's not just. It's a, it's a physical action, but it's also an emotional one. And I feel like children don't understand it, they just see sex, dick goes inside, and that's it. So, they don't. Yeah. Know what emotions you feel after. Is that is that sex you're speaking about or sexual pleasure? And the reason mm. why I'm distinguishing between the two, sex like we said earlier, is just an act. Mm. Penis goes into the vagina. That's sex. Mm. But is it pleasurable? Now, if it's pleasurable, mm-hmm. then you need the emotional connection. You need yeah. to mentally read. That's that's a different. That's a different. Yeah. yeah. But when we speak about sex itself, and we generally we use the term to change people when they're very different. Now, I think for a lot of men, I'm, again I'm generalising their sex is generally always pleasurable, mm-hmm. whereas with women it's not, it's not. that emotional yeah. component's not there. So that's why I think it's important if we're speaking about sex, we talk about pleasure as well because mm-hmm. yes, you can, you can have sex, but are you enjoying it? And mm-hmm. if your mind is not there, like we know for women, you correct me if I'm wrong, for in order for a woman to really enjoy sex or have an orgasm, she needs to be there mentally. Yeah. Like the mind is like 90% yeah. the most important component about sex for, for women, whereas for men, it's not as important. And that's why for men it's kind of seen as you can have sex and you don't really have any connection with that mm-hmm. one person, but then maybe as men we need to learn to value ourselves. I yeah. think men, I'm speaking for myself as well, we probably don't value ourselves as much as probably women value their bodies. So I can put my penis in anything as long as she gets me around. Mm-hmm. When I was relatively young, that's how I viewed it. Whereas yeah. women had that intuition, understanding where they respected their bodies, they wouldn't want to be penetrated by anyone. Yeah. Well, well I think mean, that takes years. It takes for some people, well, most people, most women, it takes years to understand that yourself because even as yeah. a young girl, you think, oh, well, I'm doing it for the guy, I don't know why I'm doing it. I'm yeah. not even sure what I'm doing, yeah. I'm just doing it. But and then after a while, you start to, you, you realise, you feel and sometimes yeah. sad. If you've had sex something you don't like, and it's because you're, you're all, I think because a lot of women, they prioritise men and males. Yeah, and so it's back to like society. Yeah. And it's funny because I think a lot of men, they kind of have this sexual awakening or realisation mm. when 
they have a daughter. Then all of a sudden, it's like now I respect women. Yeah. And it's just like well, you need to have a daughter in order to respect For women. For you to know how. And I hear that yeah. a lot, and I'm always wondering: is it, is it um, women you respect or your daughter you're trying to protect? Yeah.